Hi, welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton from theketonist.com, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we have a doctor in the house, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check with a trusted medical professional about your personal medical concerns. Hey guys, and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton, your host, and I'm here today with Carrie Brown. Hello. And I apologize if I sound weird. I'm in a weird room. I'm doing my best to fix the sound quality, but if it's echoey, that's on me. Consider it like atmospheric, like we're at a um, retreat. We're in a spa. We're at a spa. I don't know. Fill in the blank on why I sound like I might be in a cave. We wish we were in a spa. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So we want to talk about holidays um, because we're entering in, uh, we're recording this in October. This will come out in November. And as we know, the November, December months are rife with holidays. All Uh, the holidays and all the buffets and parties and get-togethers and all the things. Yeah, and especially food holidays. It's not like summer is like barbecue, but this these winter holidays can be kind of a minefield for some of us because there's so many food memories and so many of those foods are so not keto. Yeah, the holidays, particularly Thanksgiving and Christmas, seem to have very, very, very specific menus. I think the summers, the barbecues, you can tweak, you can like anything goes pretty much, or you can just have a plain pile of barbecued meat. But the but the Thanksgiving and Christmas, the winter holidays seem like they have a very specific menu, and most of those traditional items are not very keto-friendly. No, they are not. Yeah, and it's. I think. I think food, flavor, smells, all that is so wrapped up in our our memory brain, um, and it, there's this way that those traditions and those taste memories, those smell memories, they they like bring us back to some childhood experience, and they kind of feel like love. And so I think that makes it a real struggle for some people to not want to indulge in certain foods. Yeah, and over in England, of course, we don't have Thanksgiving, but boy, howdy, do we make up for it at Christmas. <laughs> the, <laughs> I know in, it's kind in, of an overload in the United States. It's sort of like, I mean, but we do, you know, it's like go big or go home, right? We like, we're like, let's do an enormous feast and then a month later do it again. Yeah, and we tend to, a lot of folks in England have like have that 10 days off. They like, they stop work on Christmas Eve and they don't go back till January 2nd. So instead of having two holidays spaced out, we kind of have this like eight day like holiday fest where we just have all the food and all the time. Yeah, it's the extended version. Actually, yes. today is... Um is Canadian Thanksgiving. So those of you that are listening to this when we actually put it up on the air and not, I don't know, tapping into carry in my phone lines, um, it's already passed. But, uh, but the Canadians have theirs a little bit early, which is also smarter. But puts a bigger gap between, <laughs> between Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> true, true. So it's like how long will the debauchery last? So, yeah, so coming up... Soon is Thanksgiving in the United in the United States anyway, and interestingly, I think most of us what we do in the United States for Thanksgiving looks more like what the Brits do at Christmas. Do you tend to do the turkey thing? Yes, we have. So traditional Christmas dinner is roast turkey. Okay. So which is of course we do here in the U.S. on Thanksgiving, but yes, turkey is what we do at Christmas traditionally. Okay, so the dishes are familiar, it's just the timing. Well, some of the dishes are familiar. The turkey is familiar, but the sides that we put with an English turkey as opposed to an American turkey and the desserts are very different and none of them keto. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, not in the States either usually, <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, nowhere, no, not in... And actually, the surprisingly enough, the English 
Christmas desserts are not even able to be made keto. And we can cover that in a little bit when we get to that part. And why must you complicate? Yes. But, but at least the American ones are able to be made keto. Okay. Well, it's always a challenge. Um, yeah. I mean, my traditional Thanksgiving memories are actually, were never at home. We were always home for Christmas, but we, we went to my great aunt's house. Their last name was Peacock. Um, the peacock. What a very British name. I know. I think he was British. Uh, her <laughs> husband, not my, not my, my great aunt. Their family is. Ha they will, I mean, my great great grandfather's British. Howerton is a British name. So that side of the family is. Uh, there's a British line, uh, but it's not. Who killed Mrs. Peacock in the library with the <laughs> lead pipe? <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, oh gosh, my brain is not remembering her first name. That's so sad. My aunt. Um, and her husband, the Peacocks, had three children, and we would go, they lived in the country. And so um, it was very Americana, very sort of country. She would always put up pickles and we'd get a jar, um, bread and butter pickles though, so not very keto. But um, And so I have all these really fond Thanksgiving memories um, and it was very traditional. And I have to say that at this point in my keto journey, I don't feel like my Thanksgiving meal is any less exciting or delicious. And most of my dishes are pretty much representative of the flavors that I had at Thanksgiving. Right. And most of my memories of Thanksgiving, of course, short-lived because I haven't been here my whole life. I didn't grow up here. But my, my, my starkest memory of Thanksgiving is my first Thanksgiving I was in America. And most of it was horror. Um, oh, no. I, I walked into, into a kitchen and saw a dish, a casserole dish of orange stuff and somebody tipping an entire bag of mini marshmallows all over it oh, and spreading them out and putting it in casserole. the oven. And I was like, I have no idea what that is, but I don't want to eat it. And then, and then sitting down at the table and there's jello on the plate with the turkey and the gravy. And I'm like, I don't know where I am, but I, I don't want to be here. Welcome so to America. <laughs> So I was fairly horrified by, by first Thanksgiving and, and for Thanksgivings thereafter, I kind of, if I was in charge, I would do a traditional Christmas dinner on yeah. Thanksgiving and I did not have jello or as we call it, jelly with my gravy because that's wrong on so many levels. Now, I will say that my mom used to make a jello ring for Christmas, not for Thanksgiving. There, it was always... Um, it was sort of like a Waldorf salad version. It was delicious. It was lime jello with chopped, no! chopped celery and chopped nuts. And I don't know why that was so good. It was good. Anyway, but you could bake that keto. Y yeah. <laughs> um, I think I have about 3,000 other things on my list of recipes to make before I'm going to pick the Christmas jello. I understand. Does that make You're me a food green? snob? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think jello is like the dividing line. <laughs> um, although I don't use traditional like store bought gelatins, um, like the jello brand ones, because they just got a lot of crap in them. But there is one brand, gosh, I can't remember what it is. It's a friend, it's like, it's got a French name and you can find it at fancy stores. I'll put it in the notes. There's one brand of, they make flavored jellos that don't have junk in them. But for the most part, I actually make my own jello now. So yeah. if I do something gelled, I just add whatever flavors I want and then just plain gelatin. gelatin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That fake lime flavor is very hard to recreate, I will say that. Yeah, that's because it's a bunch of chemicals made in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not really lime. It's and not something you want to aspire to, Miss Howerton. Okay, fine. It's the childhood stuff, you know. But so for my Thanksgiving on keto, I tend to make, and you can, you can fill in the blanks, tend to make a roasted turkey, and I do it in a unique fashion. I roast my turkeys upside down. Me too. <gasps> you do. Nobody else knows about this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, be well, because it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Yes. 
This might be a British thing. I actually learned it from Nigella Lawson. I the, mean, fat, the fat runs into the breast, which is the dry bit. <clears throat> right. So those of you that don't know this trick, flip your turkey breast side down when you roast it. And yeah, the fat from the dark meat will drip through the white meat, keeping it moist and less likely to dry out. And then just flip it back half an hour before the end so your breast gets nice and brown. Yeah. It, it, okay. Have you, it's always a bit of a crisis in my house when it's time to flip the turkey back over. We've yet to find like a perfect way of doing it that didn't involve the best way we've come up with at least get some kitchen towels dirty because grabbing a slippery turkey (laughs) turkey in the middle of it being cooked has some unique challenges. Now, if it's a small turkey, you can use the stabbers and flip it that way. But if it's a really big turkey, those stabbers are not strong enough. Oh, so I was going to say there's these... um turkey lifter things that are like like oversized forks that are absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. enormous they're about 10 inches wide and they've got like a bunch of really stiff prongs. you can't even do it with that we tried with that one year and it was a bit of a keystone cop moment so we went back to the uh, kitchen towel approach the other thing you could try is to put a another roasting tin oh. on it uh-huh. And then with your lifters and have someone holding it and then turn it over and that, hmm. that might be easier. Okay. Mostly I'm afraid of the flaming hot fat drippings in the bottom of the pan though. Right. Anyway, we've made it work every year. We have maybe a second tray. Anyway, we've made it work every year and it, it is totally worth the five minutes of confusion when you have to flip it because before then, you know, you'd occasionally almost accidentally cook a turkey well but usually it was disappointing. I have not had right. a disappointing turkey since I started using the upside down method. Yes, the um, I always cook my turkeys upside down for the first half an hour. Oh, and see, while, I, while we're talking turkeys, yeah. Top tip: don't forget to take the bag of bits out before you cook oh, it. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that would be particularly bad. if you're if you're trying to avoid the cavity because you're missing stuffing and you haven't found a good replacement you might avoid and thus forget if you're not stuffing it, you might forget that the bag of bits is in there. So just do remember to take that out. Check yeah. all the orifices because last year I had half of the bag of bits was in the other orifice. Yeah. There's some in the neck. Yes. Yeah. So check all the orifices on your turkey before you do anything else. Yeah. That's very important. And you can use those. So they're, they're good for gravy and things like that. Uh, The other thing is I tend to tell people never, never, ever, keto or not, put stuffing inside the turkey. One, it takes forever for that turkey to cook. Two, you tend to be likely to give somebody food poisoning. Right. I do not cook. I do not stuff my turkey with stuffing. I stuff it with something, but not with stuffing. I throw some scraps like I throw some like ends of celery in there and some lemons and some onion I put some things like that in there to give it some aromatics there you go yeah okay so turkey check that is kind of official holiday food what do you think about people who are not down with turkey and do something like a chicken I would rather if you're feeling brave or actually, you don't have to be that brave. If you're just feeling like doing something different, instead of chicken, get a goose. Ooh. Because goose are the fattiest waterfowl we have. So if you're keto and you want something truly tasty and truly rich and truly fatty, get a goose. Then typically not as big as turkeys at all so if you're feeding a big crowd you might want two but two is actually easier to handle than one enormous turkey anyway so i would rather you get a goose or two than a chicken okay or even a duck but ducks do Mm -hmm. tend to have a very although they go great with cranberry too um they're a little easier to some people yeah they are they're they're a kind of darker and richer but um Cranberry goes well with all of them because, of course, the, the acid in the cranberries like cuts the, the grease um, 
So, yeah, cranberry goes well with duck and goose. But I would really recommend that you kind of get out of your comfort zone a bit and not have chicken. Yeah. Get a small turkey if you're overwhelmed by the turkey idea. Yeah. But you can get goose just about everywhere. I think I've, I've seen them in most grocery stores I go in year round. So um, try that. All right. So then what would do you serve on the side? I tend to like my version of stuffing. And I tried for years to like a keto bread-based stuffing. And I am much happier with just leaving it out and having it sort of be a bunch of vegetables with that sort of traditional sagey flavoring and a little bit of sausage for and nuts for texture. I actually do a bread-free stuffing. Yes, um, I have two in my holiday cookbook, which are both uh, free of any kind of traditional stuffing things. Um, no, they're not made with stuffing substitutes or keto biscuits or right. anything like that. Because I think that's a mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to ketify a recipe or a food that they love. Don't try to duplicate the details ever, right? Like, okay, well, right. the details of stuffing are it's got bread in it. Well, we all know there is no such thing as a keto bread that acts 100% like regular bread in terms of texture and especially when it's wet. Right. right. And th I think that's the thing is that if people use an, an almond flour or a coconut flour biscuit or bread, those things do not absorb liquid, which is like the key component of stuffing is that the bread absorbs all the liquid and swells and does all that magic. That cannot possibly happen with an almond flour or nut flour alternative. It just it just can't. So I kind of felt like it was was better to just not try and recreate that like you right. not try and, and and recreate that but just to to do something different that would just totally scratch that itch without any bread or bread replacement right so i when i created my um stuffing recipe or dressing depending on where you live there's a dressing stuffing divide in the it's like the mason dixon line i don't know um and so when you and nobody knows where that is i don't even know where that is but um it's i was like okay I, it has to have a little bit of chew a little bit of crunch it's got to have this kind of flavor so it's going more for the sensations and the flavors and the smells rather than the details and in the end i came up with sort of a combination of ingredients that re that really scratched the itch rather than looked like the right details. Right. Like I use, I mean, some people hate eggplant, so that's on you, but I used eggplant because eggplant gets soft and mushy, which is kind of what I like about stuffing. There was this, there's a sort of mushy element to it, which doesn't sound all that appealing, but, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, and I add sausage to it, which gives it a little bit of chewiness. And so, you know, you can kind of like little by little sort of, build a house, if you will, of flavor and textures that, that, that hit that spot you're looking to get hit. Right. I, and I kind of, and I don't think we even knew each other when we, when we individually developed our, our stuffing recipes. Um, so between us, we have we three or four. Yeah, yeah we, we, we have a couple of overlaps of recipes, but so far, I'm impressed. We both cook our turkey upside down. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, we and, and we have, between us, we have three or four completely different stuffing recipes. So, so you've got four to choose from, and one of them will totally rock your world. Yep, absolutely. So if we haven't mentioned it, well, Carrie started to, but both Carrie and I have holiday cookbooks. We'll put the links in the show notes so you can uh, grab them if you want them for your holiday season. And we actually even have them as a bundle. If you don't have either of them, you can get them both in a bundle for a discount. Yes. Um, and, and as Kim said, there's surprisingly few overlaps. There's a couple, but really very, very few, the books. So between them, there are a wealth of recipes that will get you through every, every holiday you can dream up. <laughs> yeah. If you want a pumpkin recipe, it's most likely in my cookbook. Although Carrie's yep. pumpkin pie is very good. 
so people say. <laughs> Do you not like pumpkin? I didn't grow up with pumpkin. Yeah. Um, we didn't have pumpkins in England. I think we have pumpkins over there now, but I've been gone so long, I don't know. Right. But So I, it's just not a flavor that I, I never had it until, you know, like 15 years ago. And then, uh, yeah, so it's just not, not a, I'm not a fan of pumpkin, um, but I tasted my pumpkin pie all over and everyone says it tastes exactly like the real yeah, thing, I mean, real thing yeah. in air quotes, but yeah. I mean, because like so. real thing, what does that even mean? Right. It's, you know, it's got pumpkin <laughs> in it. In fact, anyway. it's more real than the other stuff, but anyway, yes. Right. So, and then the other big cornerstone of, Thanksgiving tends to be the mashed potatoes. Right. Which everybody knows you use cauliflower. It's not that much of a mystery. Uh, there's actually two other recipes for uh, mashed potatoes that are not cauliflower in my cookbook. So That's you right. can... Do you want to give, give the secret away? No. Okay. You have to get her cookbook. <laughs> um, and... Uh, we both have gravy recipes. Do you have a gravy recipe? I do. And mine is actually up on my website because I didn't have room to put it in my cookbook. <laughs> and so it's like there's a little line under the turkey recipe under the, I describe how I do the turkey. And there's a line that says the gravy is here. And so the gravy right. is up on my, up on and my I blog. I think the key feature here is a lot of people will tell you to use xanthan gum in no. making your gravy, and we will both say, do not do that unless no. you appreciate a lot of sliminess in your mouth. Do not do that if you want to happy Thanksgiving. Right. If Be you want happy peoples, do not use anthem gum or guar gum. No, you want to use konjac. Konjac, also or, known as glucomenin powder. Yep, either one. And I recommend that you have, that like now food sells it in what looks like almost like a pill bottle. It's really easy to store. Yep. Um, and, and you won't use much, so that will last you a long time yep. in your life. But it's a good thing to have in your, in your cabinet. Yes, it is my absolute cornstarch replacement go-to. It is the best keto thickener out there. Yeah, so that is going to make your gravy a delicious. Because the only thing we're really missing from a traditional gravy is the flour, the thickener, the right. cornstarch, whatever you use in your house. Right. And you can, you don't, now you don't use the same quantity. But no, you need to no. use glucom. A little goes a long way. So you're yes. just using a teeny bit. Um, you can always add more. You can't take any out. But it seems that um, people really struggle with gravy. I get probably more gravy questions. That's why I put it up on the on the blog because I get more questions about how to make good gravy than um, than a, a lot of other questions. So anyway, it's there, and I hope it helps. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fairly simple thing to do, but. It can feel a little overwhelming, I think, because a lot of people are like struggling with the like getting the turkey out, timing. Right. And so what I tend to recommend is actually make, don't worry about the drippings right away. Make a serving of gravy without worrying about the drippings. You can make your second batch of gravy with the drippings, but that first batch, so you know it's ready and it's ready to serve and you don't have to worry about it. You can do those things in, in, um, in advance. So, um, so well, what are what other sides do you have in America? What you have the mashed potato and the gravy? Mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, traditionally, green bean casserole, but that's oh yes, that's never actually been one of my family's things. But green bean casserole, um, which you can ketofy absolutely. Yes, um, I actually have up on my somewhere oh it, oh in the facebook group for this for this podcast, podcast mm -hmm. it, there is a infographic that i made about a cream of mushroom soup replacement aha uh -huh. so it's like a little bit of a thing you can do and it's better than cream of mushroom soup and you can use it for whatever you want but if you're doing something that called for cream of mushroom soup you can sub in this perfect yeah. And then, you know, there's like, I guess cream bean casserole has like crispy onions on top, but you can fry up some onion. Um, yeah. You don't need to, or shallot or whatever. You don't need, you don't, you're not using a lot of it. It's just a topping. So you I don't haven't, need to it. I haven't tried it, but I understand that the onion rings are great in the air fryer, but yeah, I haven't tried it. So I haven't either, but I've seen a few recipes that look lovely. So I would just look online for a 
onion ring recipe and try some out if you want, but you can always just top it with some, some um, air fryer, just plain onion. It doesn't right. need to be uh, breaded. Right. Yeah. And so, so what else? What is, else? What else? Well, rolls, some type of roll or biscuit, which is a very American term. Our biscuits are much like your scones. And yes. our rolls We are, would never have scones with turkey. Right. Because ever. are your scones exclusively a breakfast type food? Yes? No. No? No, tea. Tea. Oh, right. Mm. You're right. I don't Often even, I tea. forget all about tea. Yes. Okay. So, but th- so, but some people go with the rolls, which are more like a dinner roll and some right. people go with a biscuit. So there's, there's different family traditions. Yep. We I, do rolls in England. Okay. I will tell you that Carrie, and I'm, I'm not only saying this cause she's here. Um, Carrie Brown's I don't remember what they're called. The, they're um, you're in your holiday cookbook. The the chive. Oh, the sour cream and onion chow, sour cream and chive biscuits. They are the best keto biscuit I've had. And my my boyfriend, who is not keto, actually requests them. Um, so they are worth the effort for your holiday table. And if this wasn't radio, you could see how embarrassed I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't take a compliment well. Um, I, they are, they are very, very, very. In fact, I think, I think that is one of the most popular recipes I've ever put out is the sour cream and chive scones biscuits. Right. So yes. to me, they are kind of a special occasion. I wouldn't make those on the daily, but I think that you can make them in a little bit in advance. They're not hard to make. But yep. they are delicious. Yep. And they're very good. You can warm them and do all the things with them. Yep. So, yeah. The other thing that is obviously imperative on your holiday table is cranberry. Right. Um, which basically people, if you've made cranberry before, it's really easy and you just change out the sweetener. But there's kind of a complication. Like I have an entire page in my cookbook discussing the sweetener you use with cranberry because you're making a bit of a jelly, right? I mean, even the non like solid form gelled solid one, there is a gelling process happening. Yes. And keto sweeteners aren't like sugar. So the gelling is different, which means not all sweeteners will do what you want it to do. Right. Which means that even though I rarely use xylitol, because I actually do have an insulin response to xylitol. It's not a zero on the glycemic index. Um, The exception I make for that is when I'm making cranberry, because one, you don't use, it's actually a good reminder that you're not supposed to eat a cup of cranberry. It is a relish. It is something to go with things. It's not a meal in and of itself, although it is delicious and you want to do that. And I don't do it every day. Not everybody gets the same. Not everyone is as metabolically messed up as me. So, you know, that is where I use xylitol. Part of the problem is the amount of sweetener you need to use. And so erythritol, which includes plain erythritol, um, monk fruit, which is basically erythritol, uh, swerve, which is basically erythritol, and all the other erythritol blends. Mostly erythritol. The problem is because you have to use so much of it because cranberries are so tart that the erythritol misbehaves. Yeah, badly. It gets it by that's because cranberry is meant to be served cold, and when you right. cool off the erythritol, it it's not so bad day one, crunchy. but yeah. day two you get a little sandy, crunchy. Yeah, um, I have done it before where I didn't use much erythritol. So I used, whereas you'd normally use like a cup for a bag of, of cranberry for sweetener, I used like two tablespoons of erythritol and then I added some stevia and I added some liquid monk fruit and that cranberry was extremely tart, but it was a way that I made a version of it without using xylitol and the texture was okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, erythritol, if you just think, if you see a cranberry recipe that says, you know, an amount of, you know, insert sweetener here, any sweetener you like, any granular sweeter, sweetener, know that if you choose to use erythritol or an erythritol blend, you are going to have crunchy cranberry. Right. And now, you're likely said, going to be sad. 
<laughs> yeah. As I said, the day of, so if you like made your cranberry like in the, in the morning and you served it that afternoon, it's not super crunchy. But right. tomorrow, it's going to be very crunchy. Yes. So yes. it's so a, just don't. Yeah. And so, you know, this is one of those things where you pick your battles. If you are new to keto, if you're brand new to keto and you're like, I'm really worried about being no longer in ketosis, I'm not fat adapted yet, you know, maybe you make the version that isn't very sweet at all for yourself. Um, or you just use a teeny bit of it or you skip the cranberry. But there are, you know, you have to pick in terms of what works for your metabolism and, and the way your body works. But for me, it's more about not using very much of it. Right. Okay. Now, we have, um, we mentioned the jello <laughs> yes. noxiousness that is relatively easy to be made keto. So I don't think we need to talk about that. But we do need to touch on the subject of candied yams or oh, okay. whatever that abomination to dinners worldwide is that I happened upon during my first Thanksgiving. So there is a traditional thanks. So Americans are very confused in general about the difference between sweet potatoes and yams, I will say. And so we, we often can use one instead of the other when we mean the other and whatever. So that can be confusing. But please explain. So <laughs> they're both. So yams and sweet potatoes are different animals. They're not animals, they're potatoes, but you know, or root vegetables. So, but they are often used interchangeably and they're often mislabeled. But in general, a yam tends to be darker in color and has a slightly looser texture. They're often, um, the, the skin on the outside of a yam tends to be more uh, purpley and whereas the sweet potato, it, it's a lot more potatoey. It's lighter. The flesh of the potato is, is yellow, not orange, as a yam is. And so there can be, they can be used, but they can be used fairly interchangeably. The yam is a sort of a more intense flavor. Um, both are fairly carby, and neither are things that I would recommend you eat on keto. So this may be my discussion of yams versus sweet potatoes, maybe just. And that's why I pose the question because I know that, that some people are going, but what about candied yams? Right. And so we should say, basically, that's one of those things. You can make keto marshmallows, but you cannot, they're, you still, you're not going to get. I will say, yeah, you cannot have sweet potatoes or yams yeah. if you really want to stay in ketosis yeah. for the most part. I mean, yes, you can yeah. have one spoonful, but. But I will tell you that I have seen some copycat recipes that are supposedly not bad where they use a, I know this sounds weird, a blend of cauliflower and pumpkin. I, I haven't tried that because candied jams are, are an anathema to me anyway. <laughs> um, but, you know, if, if candy jams are really the thing that makes Thanksgiving Thanksgiving for you, you may want to try something like a blend of cauliflower and pumpkin. Right. So and then keto marshmallows on top. Um, right. You What I would do if you, if this was really important to you and you wanted to tinker, I would take a mix, maybe 50-50 or so, of cooked pumpkin and cooked cauliflower and throw it in your food processor and then add something like a swerve brown sugar to it to get the appropriate sweetness level and add spices. And then I would, I don't know how the keto marshmallows react to heating. That's my one. They're, they're fine. They they're, work? Well, okay. They're fine if they're in a dish. If you're trying to toast it, like a s'more situation. Yeah, that's not good. That's not so good. Okay, but they'll toast. But they if you they put them on top. do melt and toast. Um, okay. Not as brown, but they do melt and do that as long as they're in a dish. Right. I mean, honestly, because I was never that into sweet potato casserole, um, this has never felt like a good use of my carb budget because it is going to be fairly carby at the end of the day with right. with whatever you do there. But and, I think if it is, yeah, if it is your jam that really makes it for you, then you might want to, you know, not do the mashed potato even oh, oh yeah, that. Um, 
Maria Emmerich on her website has a recipe for, for, for mock sweet potatoes. So go there, look at it. I think it's, it's what we describe. Neither one of us has this recipe. But I still wouldn't recommend you eat too much of it in one sitting. No. No, Depending I on, what, of course, where you are on your journey and, you know, right. how insulin, all of that, all the normal caveats. Right. I would say, in general, you want to, like, I tend to look at a lot of these kind of situations as I have a carb budget and I want to stay within my budget. What am I going to get the most flavor bang for my buck so that I can eat the things that matter to me and I just skip the things that don't matter to me? Right. And if you, if you really like candy jams, but you, you, you can leave the desserts, then maybe that's your, maybe that's your compromise. I mean, it really is a dessert. I mean, yeah. we serve it with the meal, but. Right. Right. So maybe that, that's your compromise is that you don't have the pecan pie, but you get your candy, your, your keto version of candy jams. So right. just know that even the keto version is not very keto. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what remains are like, those are kind of the, the traditional staples, I think, in terms of the dinner itself. I mean, there's obviously appetizer stuff and, and dessert stuff, but then, you know, some people do things like, have things like cream spinach. Um, in the South, there, I'm not Southern, so I don't, there are traditional Southern dishes. I see people doing macaroni and cheese. I see people doing, uh, what else have I seen? Now the Southerners are yelling at me. Um, well, the but, English people actually, it's easier because traditional sides for us would be um, baby sausages. We call them chipolatas. So we don't do those at all. Baby sausages rolled up in bacon. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, turkey, mm -hmm, chipolatas, mm -hmm. bacon, gravy. We do, of course, have the mash and, and often roast potatoes too. So they'll have to go. Like potato um, or potato. Yep. Um, and then Brussels sprouts, which of course are great right. for keto. Carrots, which are, depending on where you are, carrots are down the carb you're in, so you might want to skip those or just have one or whatever. And those are not um, traditionally American at all. Right. And, and then peas, but again, peas, super carby. You probably want to stick away from the peas. Yeah. But generally you can, and, and cranberry, we have the cranberry too. So pretty much you don't have to skip much at all if you're British to get a traditional um, Christmas turkey dinner. Right. So the other thing that popped into my head uh, was that we often for Thanksgiving um, kind of there's like an, a it's an afternoon of eating. There's this sort of like just extended eating period. So I would really recommend that people, if they, if, if they can't fast the rest of the day, I would recommend that in the morning, if you have a small breakfast, have a entirely carb-free event. So bacon and eggs, you know, don't have your pumpkin bread, keto pumpkin bread for breakfast, and then, you know, you go into your holiday meal. Just save, save the specific carbs you're doing for the keto carbs, that is, for your, your big dinner. Right. Um, okay, should we talk about desserts? I feel I feel like we're just giving a list of foods, <laughs> which we kind of are. We could. We should talk about desserts. Okay. Do, do we want to do that now, or do we want to make so, that a whole can't... other episode? Oh, maybe the dessert should be a whole other episode. All right, you guys, we'll come. We'll do a second episode on desserts. Okay. okay. Okay, so it might be useful just to throw in a few a few how do I eat out tips at this point if I'm not in control of the oh cooking. right at a at a friend's house say right if if I'm not the hostess and I'm not in control what do I do how do I survive yeah I mean this is a big deal because holidays like these food holidays are super family events and and families will really vary in terms of, I don't know, flexibility, right? So I hear from some people like, I'm going to my mother-in-law's house and she won't let me bring any food because she thinks that's rude. Whereas my, my number one piece of advice would be bring food you can eat if you, do, if you know that you're going somewhere where they won't necessarily cater to your specific needs. But then so what do you do? 
Well, in that case, one thing you might try is to is to not be very hungry when you get there. So pre-eat some something protein that's um, going to keep you mostly satiated and then nibble on the things you can eat when you get there. Right. So one of the things that if you're going to somebody's house and if they're a close friend and or family member, obviously you're going to bring some dishes because that's what you, you, know, you tend to do and bring some keto dishes. Um, and obviously they're just normal dishes, but they work for your keto approach, right? Like cream spinach made in the keto style is just cream spinach. Right. Um, it just uh, it just uh, omits some of the troublesome ingredients, and so and, and, you, and you don't have to make a thing of it. I mean, you don't have to turn up with your thing and announce that it's keto, right? You can it's, just bring it and add it to the table and enjoy it along with everybody else, and nobody will know, and nobody will think you're weird, and nobody will criticize the, your chosen way of eating. Now, I mean, I can tell you my first Thanksgiving that I was keto, I went to my sister-in-law's house and she is fine with whatever I want to do. But what I had done was I had pre-prepared like a serving of cranberry and a serving of gravy and a ser- so thing in little Tupperwares, I brought them and I put them in her kitchen. And when it was time to serve the meal, I helped myself. We did like a buffet style. I helped myself to the turkey and, a, and the salad and a few things that I knew were fine for me to eat. She makes this amazing thing that has mostly cream and butter in it, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll do these things. And then I just detoured into the kitchen, put the other things on my plate and just came back out of the room. Nobody even noticed that I did anything different than everybody else. And like, I, w- I didn't have a problem announcing anything, but I also saw no reason to bother announcing right. anything. Right. I often think that if we just um, keep quiet and do our thing, most people are so busy with themselves or, or, you know, their spouse that they're not even – or taking care of their kids if it's a, uh, an event with kids that they're, they're not even going to notice. And they'll only notice if you draw attention to it. Right, right. Don't, don't have a tantrum. Don't start crying. You know, like, don't – I mean, I, I'm not telling you to not have emotions, but feel empowered in your choices. Now, if you're in a situation that is not empowering you, you have – some crappy relatives, I'll just put it that way, who are offended that you're not having their fill in the blank, um, you know, that's on them. That's not you. That's their problem. Right. And they need to deal with their own issues. I know that doesn't make it super comfortable, but there's a quote that I really like. And it's actually, I don't, nobody knows who wrote it. If you know who wrote it, please email me. Um, you do not have to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. That's an awesome quote. And I remember you posting it now. And that yeah. is, it is. Um, and, you know, if you're, if you're tiptoeing around trying to make other people feel comfortable, just remind yourself how physically uncomfortable you are going to be for the next day, two, three, four week if you try and take care of their feelings when that's something they should be taking care of themselves. Right. And I think for a lot of us, when we go keto, we tend to realize that we might not be the best at boundaries um, and self-care, right? And so you can use this as an opportunity to get good at those things. One of which is that your self-care comes before their opinion of you. Right. Another thing I like to do either when I eat out or when I go to someone else's house where I have no control is to make it a game. And the game is let me see how keto I can make my plate of food. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and turkey is keto. And I like to focus on the things that I can eat. Mm -hmm. not on the things that I can't eat. And I find that by doing a combination of those two things, I'm full enough that I'm good for the evening. Right. So if you go to somebody's house and you don't have any control, you know, have some turkey. If you're not, if you're um, intolerant to gluten, avoid the gravy. 
if you do tolerate gluten, for the most part, you could have a little bit of gravy. It's not a great choice, but it's, you know, in and of itself, not going to knock anything over. Avoid the stuffing, avoid the sweet potato casserole, you know, have some green beans, have some vegetables, have the, you know, a lot of tables will have those things, avoid the bread, but you could just fill up on the turkey and things like that. And you're going to be in pretty good shape when you leave. And then I would say if, if holiday food is important to you, have some of your favorite keto versions at home and have a second, ha, not the same day, but, you know, pick another day to have your own version of keto Thanksgiving. Where you get to eat your favorite Thanksgiving things, but made in a keto way. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, it, but there is, I mean, in general, this whole season is full of navigating emotions, both our own in terms of food memories and then uh, sort of navigating other people's feelings about what we're eating. Right. But just, as I say, remember that in taking care of someone else's feelings, you might be setting yourself up for physical pain. And we really, really hope that you choose not to do that. Right. I mean, because one of the things is not only the like short-term discomfort, but a lot of people end up self-sabotaging after a, an emotional experience. Um, and so if you get kind of twisted up in feeling bad about what's going on in your family dynamic and in your holiday experience, and you're like, ah, oh, screw it, I'll just have the fill in blank. And now it's January 2nd, and you've just gained the 20 pounds you lost back. You know, I mean, right. it can happen. So one, I would say don't let a slip up become a sabotage. Avalanche. <laughs> Yeah. Don't let a snowball become an avalanche. Avalanche, maybe a, like a anyway, like a hybrid word. Um, that was in, not successful. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, at the same time, you know, know that for some of us, me included, I'm much better having a strong boundary and not having to deal with the repercussions in the first place. And that just reminds me, and this is a useful tip for life actually but is really make the decision that you know i don't eat bread i don't eat this i don't eat that because once you've made the decision when someone comes to you and says would you like you know fill in the blank right. you you don't have to think about it it's like if someone comes up to me and says oh hey would you like a cigarette no thanks i don't smoke I don't have to think about it and make a decision when temptation is right in front of me. I've already made that decision. No, I don't smoke, so no thank you. Do the same with your with your diet. You know, someone's offering you candy. No thanks, I don't eat candy. You don't have to, to stand there and go, right. oh, should I, should I, shouldn't I? Because you've already made the decision. No, I don't do that. So you just say, no thanks, right. move on. And a, a, to piggyback on that, one piece of advice I would give you is to stay away from the word trying, right? Like Carrie just said, I don't eat candy. That's an identity piece. It's like a hard line. It's black and white. You don't eat candy. I don't eat candy. Um, whereas if you said, I'm trying not to eat candy, then you are still somebody that wants to eat candy and you're easily swayed. And it's just a whole different Right. So if you approach the thought of going out to eat or approach the thought of going to a Thanksgiving or holiday get together with the I'm going to try and stay keto, that's probably not going to work out so well. But if you go with the mindset, well, I'm keto and I'm only going to eat keto things, you're not continually going to be faced with that. <gasps> should I, should I, shouldn't I? You you're right. just, it's just like, I don't eat that stuff. Right. It and makes it a lot simpler in the moment. It absolutely does. We, you know, one of the concepts that we talk about a lot, is like, are you an abstainer or a moderator, which are sort of a Gretchen Rubin personality trait thing. But it's a lot easier in certain circumstances to be an abstainer. I don't drink rather than, you know, I drink a little. Right. Because a little can, because that's a snowball, right? So a little and then you roll down the hill a bit and then it's bigger and bigger. And then before you know it, you're, you know, falling over things. And so, yeah, no. Okay. To make the decisions ahead of time. So there are a bunch of other holidays that are coming up in this season, depending on what religion you follow. So we've kind of avoided the religion topic because 
Thanksgiving is not religion based unless you consider being an American its own kind of religion. Um, and uh, so there's uh, a bunch of other holidays. We've got Christmas. We've got Hanukkah. Um, we've got Kwanzaa. What else is this time of year? Um, I have no idea. I don't either. I'm not I'm good at holiday. I'm very, I'm very confused about holidays. I've lived here 18 years, and I still can't keep the American holiday straight. I understand. In, in my head, I know Christmas ones anymore. I, so. I know Christmas and I know Hanukkah because I, my mom is Jewish and my dad is Christian. So uh, I will say though that my mother, who is the Jew loves Christmas, like adores Christmas, reveres Christmas as its own kind of religion, but one that's more about presents and food than the, the religious aspects. And so we always did b- big Christmas, small Hanukkah. And we just did Christmas. My family were not religious at all. Right. So in terms of Christmas foods, it's really a lot like, in my household, it was a lot like Thanksgiving. Right. But there are also some other, more, other traditions that people will have. Like, I think the Italians do a seafood night on Christmas Eve. Are you familiar? I am not familiar, but that sounds fantastic. And I think I might adopt that. Okay. I, Italians, weigh in. Um, and- One thing I have to say about Although we're not really doing dessert, so maybe we'll save that for the dessert, the dessert episode. Okay. Yes. Okay. A little anticipation. Um, And then some people do things like roast lamb or a rib roast or so so prime rib. There's a variety of appropriate Christmas type dishes, but they generally are very rich and um, follow those kinds of traditions. But you know what? Hmm. If you really just feel like it, you can have whatever you want. This is true. If you feel like having, if you love salmon, but it's expensive and you feel like having a beautiful piece of salmon for your protein, then have at it. And as we know, salmon is, is one of the fattiest fish there are. So completely keto there. There's the range of other waterfowl, all of which that are fattier than turkey. So there's that. Um, yeah, there's your lamb. There's there's fine cuts of beef. Really, you don't, you know, maybe the thing to do that will help you the most, especially if your your whole family unit that you live with is keto, is to start your own holiday tradition and come up with a keto menu that you all love that's special that you might not eat the rest of the year and make that your thing. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Right. I would say just make it special. So three years ago at Christmas, I did short ribs, but like fancy short ribs, the kind that take a lot of time and effort to make with a sauce and it was delicious. Cauliflower mash, you know, I, I really like went all out on Christmas, but it was a very, it was a hundred percent keto. Uh, the only thing I did is like my parents got regular desserts, regular desserts. I shouldn't say that. Not like d- sugared desserts for the sugar using people. And I made my own keto desserts and everybody right. wanted my keto dessert. I made a pavlova. But if, if um, trying to recreate a traditional holiday meal in a keto version is stressing you out, why not think about just making up a new menu that suits you and your family? You don't have to maintain the, you know, however many years of tradition it's been that English people have eaten turkey on Christmas. You can totally, you know, paddle your own canoe. Please, please paddle your own canoe. Um, I want to make an offer to people. If you need help navigating the holiday season, you can go to our Facebook group. If you can't find it, the link is if you go to ketolifesupport.com, there's a link that takes you to our Facebook group. And if you just post in there saying, you know, my family traditionally makes this, what do I do? We can help you make it work. Yes, if we, we can. can't help you make it work, we'll suggest that nobody that. can. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll tell you to do salmon instead. That's right. Well, I won't because I don't like salmon. 
<laughs> oh, All right. So I think that might cover the basis of our regular holiday meals. Mm -hmm. I know this has been uh, very exciting to those of you that love food and hopefully you turned it off already if you don't like to talk about food because I don't know why you're still doing here. Well, I had a fun time because I love talking about food and I especially love talking about food with my foodie friend. That's right. Carrie and I are into the foodies and I am excited to learn that I'm not the only one that cooks my turkey upside down. Yay! <laughs> Yet another thing. There's some things that you and I are like completely parallel opposites on, but there's a surprising number of things where we're like, oh, you do that too? Well, I think when there's something that's not just an opinion, but there's actually a best way to do it, we both do best practices. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, we will see you. Well, we won't see you because this is a podcast, but we will be speaking to you again very soon. Take care, everybody. See ya. Thank you so much for joining us on Keto Life Support. If you'd like more, you can join our friendly Facebook group, Keto Life Support. Can't find it? Go to ketolifesupport.com. If you ever want to suggest a topic for discussion, that would be the place to do it. We'd really, really appreciate it if you would go to your podcast app and subscribe because that's awesome. And what would be super awesome is if you'd be so kind as to write a review for us. Though we would love it if that review was awesome, just writing a review is all we ask. So have a fabulous Keto Week and we'll see you next time.